Hi, I'm Jenny and I'm a sound artist who works with field recordings and electronics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a contact microphone. Contact microphones are really cool because they pick up sound in materials rather than as waves in the air, which means that you can place them on, for instance, wood or glass or metal and listen to sounds through those materials. They're great for field recordings or for recording sounds with a special character and also for making DIY instruments, like this one. There are lots of really cool artists who work with DIY instruments. And two favorites of mine are Monique Darge, who make music boxes, and Tour Honoré Beu, who make what he calls acoustic laptops. They're beautiful visual artworks as well as instruments, so you should go check those out. What we're doing today is simply soldering a piezo element to a jack input and then placing it in a wooden box, creating the basis for your own DIY instrument. Alright, so to make a contact microphone you need a piezo element, also called a piezo disc. They come in a variety of sizes and frequency ranges, and they're usually quite cheap. The disc has two parts, the inner circle, which is where the piezoelectrical crystals are, and this is the signal terminal. The outer circle is a metal plate, which is a ground terminal. Some piezo discs come with wire attached, like this one, and as you can see the red wire is connected to the inner circle and the black wire is connected to the metal plate and that's the ground. Black wire to ground is quite typical with electronics. The other thing you need is a jack input. I'm using this mini jack input. It's three and a half millimeters and takes up much less space than the usual quarter inch jack. Since the microphone needs an amplifier to be gained up substantially, and most amps or DI boxes have a normal sized quarter inch jack input, I use a cable like this, or an adapter. You should just figure out what's most convenient for you and choose the input based on that, I'd say. And then of course you need a box or something else that you want to make your instrument in. Thin wood box, uh, boxes work really well, metal boxes work can, they can be nice as well, but they tend to resonate more with certain frequencies, so you should just check it out first. If you want, uh, you could make a loose contact mic, and then you could test out different placements and different materials before deciding on which box to use and where you want to place your microphone. I found that the bigger the surface, the better, so that could be a place to start. And the piezo should be placed with a metal plate attached to the material, like this. The jack input can be attached neatly by drilling a hole in your box, like I've done here. If you place your contact mic underneath your box like this, then you should drill a small hole for the wire to go into the box and then you're ready to solder the wire to the jack input on the inside. The jack input has two or three terminals, these little legs depending on whether it's unbalanced or balanced. The unbalanced input, which is mono, has two connectors, tip and sleeve, while a balanced stereo input has three, tip, ring and sleeve. You can see this on the male jack. This one only has one black ring here, separating the tip from the sleeve, while this one has two black rings, separating tip from ring and sleeve. Since we're using a piezo with only two terminals, it's sufficient to use an unbalanced jack input. Usually the short terminal is the tip, that's where the audio signal goes, and the long terminal is for the ground. If you haven't soldered before, I'd recommend checking out a tutorial on how to do that. It's a super useful thing to know. In this case, you can't really break anything though, so it's a really good first project to start with. Before you begin, you might want to shorten your wire a bit. Cut it so it's the perfect length, and then remove the isolation to uncover the metal again. And the first thing you should do is to tin the wire by applying some soldering tin to it. This makes it much easier to solder. Go ahead and touch the tip of the iron and the tin to the wire, and then the tin should melt and flow around the metal. When the wire is tinned, you're ready to solder the red wire to the short terminal. It usually has a small hole, 
So if you want to make it easier, you can thread the cable through there first, and then you don't have to hold it while you solder. When you put your soldering iron to the point where the signal terminal and the wire meets, it heats up that point, and then when you touch the tin to the same point, it will melt and flow over the point covering it in tin. It goes really quickly, so you don't have to hold it for long. Once you remove your iron, the tin hardens and the connection will be good. Then you do the same thing with the ground, threading the black wire into the hole of the long terminal, so it keeps in place, and then soldering it. And that's it. And now you made a contact microphone. Now um, I would test it first maybe, and uh, if it works, then go ahead and glue or secure your piezo disc to the box. If it's underneath the box, I'd cover it with some electric tape or some duct tape, um, because if you touch the inner circle, it gives a really loud ground hum, and that's not that doesn't sound very good. If it's inside the box, like this one, uh, you can glue a soda cap over it to cover it, um, but you probably do fine without it too, so just find a solution that works for you. Test your microphone by plugging in a jack cable and amplify your signal through a guitar amp or a mixer, and then you're ready to make sound. I highly recommend using a DI box to reduce the noise. Now you're ready to fill the instrument with springs or attach elastic bands or anything your imagination can come up with. And if you need any inspiration, dive into the world of the music boxes of Monique or Tourist acoustic laptops or Hugh Davis who made instruments inside old encyclopedias. I hope you found this useful. Have fun, take care and thanks so much to Nuts and Bolts for powering this tutorial. Goodbye!